Hey guys, welcome to another Home Lab series video here today. In this video, we're going to be actually uh, setting up a uh, portainer. It's like container, but portainer. Um, and as far as I'm concerned, I'm probably going to say it wrong this whole time. So you can laugh at it. It's okay. It's totally fine. But um, it's a, actually kind of a nice piece of software to actually kind of visualize your Docker or Kubernetes cluster. Um, when you are just kind of like figuring out Docker and you're not very comfortable with um, just doing command line stuff um, because it actually provides a good web GUI interface for you to kind of click around and be able to like play around with without needing to like know, oh, how do I run this Docker command and run this container and whatnot. So that's what we're going to be doing today. This video is also sponsored by me, myself, and I. So if you enjoy the content, want to sponsor me, send me some free hardware. Uh, my email is in the description below. So check it out. Send me an email. Awesome. Let's get started, guys. All right. So we're going to log into our instance. Um, 192.168.144. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to do is actually install Docker because essentially Portainer is man is managing this Docker instance. So essentially you can run, you know, multiple containers and it will show in here um, how it kind of all works. So we can go through our normal Docker Community Edition install. While that installs, um, I'll kind of show you uh, what we're kind of dealing with here in the installation. So the installation is actually very simple because they actually contain a Portainer server service in Docker actually. And it's just really an agent that runs. Um, it's just a Docker container that runs and just hooks up to kind of the, the container itself. So it's actually very simple. You pretty much just make make the volume, run the command and voila, you got it. Um, but then we'll also show you some stuff that's in the container too. So you can cut uh, in the web GUI too. So you can kind of play around with it also. Um, so while that is still installing, we will update the DNS here. So let's update our DNS to include this. All right, here we go. And Portina. And 192.168.1.144. Don't forget to update the serial number, guys. And we will commit uh, at Portainer. We will commit to main and good. Awesome. So let's go to this. Still installing. Shouldn't take too much longer here. So from here, um, there's, there's, there's a lot of things that uh, you might need to be aware of. Um, the first thing is SE Linux. Um, if you're running SE Linux on this. So if you remember back when we did the build build server image, um, build template, we actually disabled this. Um, so if if you are just watching this video and isn't going through my whole series, um, you will need to disable it. Um, and Docker is running as root. Um, so just a few things to kind of think about while, while you're doing this, but if you run into any issues, it probably will error and give you, give you some sort of error to relate. Um, all right, so now that that's installed, we will enable Docker and start Docker. Then taking a look at this doc command here, um, looks like we need to make this portainer volume, um, but really it's just at the end of the day, you can just make this directory. Uh, portainer data. And then we will copy and paste this command and it will start up a Docker instance. So um, it's gonna pull the instance down because it didn't see the instance, uh, it didn't see the image locally cached yet. So it's gonna pull it down and that was really quick, right? So now you can do a PS-A and you can see it's actually running, it's actually running on 8,000 8, and 9443. So I believe 8,000 is for the HTTP and uh, 9443 is for the HTTPS essentially. So. We should now be able to go HTTPS portainer dragon dot loco. Oh, and then nine four four three. See, this is why we talked about the ports, and I still didn't even it didn't even remember. So now you got this nice web GUI here, um, and it will essentially prompt you to create your admin pass lo login here. So we'll type in a password. It looks like the only requirement is just 12 characters long. So um, if you want to allow anonymous collection for uh, anonymous statistics 
collection, you can leave that checked. I will uncheck it. It's up to you. So now you can see that you got a kind of web GUI um, in here. So you can kind of see that we are running, you know, our local stack, which only has this portainer um, login here. Um, there's a few things, and we're gonna switch to doc theme here real quick because. Dog theme is so much better, guys. Um, so you can see, you know, we have our Portana container um, running. Um, so this is kind of like a neat place. You can add containers, you can set up networks, you can you can download images, um, and it, and honestly, it's just kind of a nice, really GUI for you know learning Docker when you when you aren't really sure what you're doing with Docker on the command line side. And this is also a very good way to kind of keep track of, hey, you know, you want to spit out one VM and you just want to put like 50 Docker containers on there. Um, this is pretty nice to kind of have to kind of support that. The only caveat with doing that and running infrastructure as, hey, I want one, you know, massive, one, one massive VM that hosts like, you know, 20 containers is if you need like forwarded ports, the VM only has so many ports that are, are limited essentially, right? So you can't have two VMs that have like 443 open, right? You have to use a different port. Um, now, of course, there's like a lot of ports, but if you're just talking about like, you know, your standard like HTTP or HTTPS with 443 or like 80, obviously those are the only two ports that are like the default and you would have to specify like in this case, 9443, right? Um, so that's one thing to consider in this architecture if you decide you want to go down this route. So to kind of play around and kind of show you, like we could easily create a PyHole server, uh, or yeah, a PyHole server by using the container here. So what we'll have here is essentially we'll name it PyHole. We'll get, grab it from the Dog Hub repository. I believe it's PyHole PyHole latest. Uh, you can actually click the search and it, it will show you. And yeah, it is PyHole PyHole latest. Okay, so. You can do that. Um, and then we will have to actually publish new network ports. So essentially like, for example, and I have to remember, I think it's running on 80. Yeah, it's running on 80. So essentially I'll have to, I'll want to forward on the host 80. So if I hit the host on 80, it will go to the container on 80, but this only works for this, this container. So if I wanted another container to be forwarded on eight, the host 80, it won't work um, because 80 is already used on the host. So that's just something to be aware of. So pretty much you just, you know, enter it in, click deploy container. Oh. And it will essentially run like the whole Docker command, Docker run, all the parameters it needs and um, download the PyHole latest. So right now it's downloading the container. You can see now it's starting. There's also logs in here. So you can like view logs and other things. Um, so like logs. So you can see how it's actually spinning up. You get the whole thing here. Oh, uh, the one thing I'll need to grab. Oh, the, this log page kind of doesn't work out very well. Um, I would actually click down with logs and actually view the logs in Notepad. Um, but if you remember back, um, there's, if you don't specify a password, there is a specific password for Pyho that would be randomly assigned um, as the container starts up. So you can see now the container is healthy. It's essentially running. Um, so if we were to go to like HTTP portainer dot dragon dot local on 80, which is default, you can see the 403 forbidden because Pyho doesn't doesn't um, run. It doesn't run on the root. You actually have to sl hit slash admin. So you can see the Pyho is actually working on this now. We can log in with the password, and now you have Pyhole actually set up, uh, and you, with Portainer. So um, there's a lot of things you can clearly do with this. This is probably something I would recommend for anyone who's just kind of getting started with Docker and need and, and wants a GUI. Um, because really, honestly, at the end of the day, you 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 don't really have a GUI um, if if you're running it on a server. It's it's you know Docker PSA. Oh, now you can see that we have both the Pyhole and the Portainer uh, Docker images running here. So it's, I mean, it's essentially the same, right? Um, but you just got a better, nice graphical user interface. And there's other things that you can get like memory uses, stats, things like that, that you can easily see easier in, a, in this GUI than actually on the server. Um, obviously the other thing with this is you can only run as many containers as the server allows resource wise. So, um, you know, if you, if you're planning to run a Minecraft uh, container and you're planning to use like eight gigs of Ram, that's going to use the eight gigs of Ram on the, on the host. So if, if there's no more Ram, then your containers will probably die or not run. So 
just things to think about as you do this. But hopefully you guys kind of enjoy, take a look at this. And there's a lot of other app templates and things like that to kind of explore. So I might make a separate video on, you know, what else can you do with this? Um, it looks like you can actually just get a, get a file browser container too. Like there's a lot of things that you can try. Oh, here's a WordPress one. <laughs> See, we didn't need to create a WordPress server guys. We could just use the WordPress container. But anywho, if, if you're interested, check this out, play around with it, have some fun, right? So there you go. Oh, there's a GitLab. See, I was just even talking about like creating a GitLab container. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, so there you go. You now know how to set up Portainer on your uh, instance and you can run more containers from it in the GUI and create it. So if you like the video, please leave a like, comment, subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.